Hello guys, DeVore here again, and today we're going to be talking about uh, task 2.4 in the Math 3 Mathematics Division Project textbook called Logarithmetic. Uh, this is the fourth task in the logarithms module out of five, so uh, guess what? We're almost done. Woohoo! Uh, this is a direct extension of 2.3. Remember in 2.3 we learned all of our logarithm rules for taking apart logarithms. And now we're actually going to use them for something. Fancy that. So let's take a look here. Let's say you want to calculate log base 2 of 6. If you know what log base 2 and log base 3 are, then you can use the product rule. Really what they're saying is you take this 6, we're going to take our little factor tree here. See how it breaks up into 2 times 3? Well, we know how to break up multiplication in terms of logarithms. Two times log base two of two times three is the same thing as saying log base two of two plus log base two of three. And well, we know this guy, it's an identity. Log base two of two is just one. That's an identity we've been using for a while. But log base two of three, we actually need to look up. Abe looked it up, apparently, and he says log base two of three is 1.585. So let's look at that. 1 plus 1.585, we get 2.585. Therefore, log base 2 of 6 equals 2.585. OK, let's see if that's reasonable or not. So let's start counting out our little powers of 2 here. We've got 1, 2, 4, 8. OK. So. Here we have our input and our log base 2 of our input. So once we get 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so 6 is halfway in between 4 and 8. It makes sense then that the logarithm of 6 would be between 2 and 3, about halfway in between. 2.585, I, I would have estimated right at about 2.5 if given the opportunity. So really, we're only off by, what, about a tenth? A little less than a tenth? A little less than a tenth? That's not bad in terms of just estimating off the top of your head. I'd say that, yeah, it's totally reasonable. OK. So Stephen tries his hand. He says that he can figure out log base 2 of 5 using the following method. Log base 2 of 2 plus 3 equals log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 3. Substitutes everything in, and so log base 2 of 5 is 2.585. Now, you should have been telling me, no, no, stop, because of this guy right here. This only, the splitting apart thing only works if it's 2 times 3 not 2 plus 3. We actually can't really figure this guy out looking at this because 5 only splits up to 5 and 1. It's a prime number. We would need to actually go and look in a logarithm table, which do exist, they're pretty cool to look at, and get log base 2 of 5 in order for us to figure this out. It's not 2.585, it's smaller than that. By how much, I'm not exactly sure. Let's see. Oh, it tells us actually. Log base 2 of 5 is 2.322. So smaller than 2.585. Not by much though. We also have log base 2 of 7 as 2.807. Okay, so we're going to go through and use our logarithm rules to split up some of the rest of these expressions. Just so you know, though, doing factor trees is pretty much going to be your best friend. 9 splits up into 3 times 3, so we get log base 2 of 3 squared. Using our exponent rule, we get 2 times log base 2 of 3, which is really 2 times 1.585. Put that in our calculator, we get 3.17. 10 
10 breaks up into 2 times 5. So I'm going to say base 2 plus log base 2 of 5 equals 1 plus, what did I say, 2.322? Yes. 2.322. So we have 3.322. Next one, log base 2 of 12. We have 3 times 4, 4 breaks up into 2 times 2. Here we have log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of 2 squared equals 1.585 plus 2. Remember that this 2 came from the exponent right here. So we get 3.585. All right, here we have our first fraction. Whenever we do fractions, I like to split up the fraction first before I do any attempt at a factor tree. It just really makes it easier to work with. I frankly, I frankly don't want to have to deal with fractions at all, so I get rid of them as quickly as I can. All right, so we have log base 2 of 7 minus log base 2 of 3. Those can't be reduced any further. We have 2.807 minus 1.585. Put that in our calculator, we get 1.222. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split up this fraction into two parts. Log base 2 of 30 minus log base 2 of 7. And this 30 can split up. It splits up into 5 and 6 and then 2 and 3. So this is actually probably going to be our one of our longest ones here, where we have log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of 3 minus log base 2 of 7. I think we've now used every one of our logarithms we were given. Let's see, 1 plus... Uh, what is that? One, uh, no, 2.322 plus 1.585 minus 2.807, which equals, when you put it into your calculator, 2.1. Nice to know that nasty thing actually comes out nicely. All right, finally, Log base 2 of 486. That's going to be a fun little factor tree. Let's see, we have 2 and 243. And I know 243 is 3 to the 5th power. Uh, you can do the factor tree if you'd like, but you can confirm 3 to the 5th is equal to 243. We've got log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 3 to the fifth equals 1 plus 5 times 1.585 equals 8.925. Here we go. Really, this is what logarithms are for. It takes some of these really nasty problems and turns them into addition problems. Isn't that just awesome? Now, this makes it so that slide rules are possible because slide rules are in base 10. This enables you to do some really calculate, some really complicated calculations and make them into addition problems using a slide rule. That's why slide rules were used for so long before the advent of modern portable calculators. All right, given the work we've just done, what other values would you need to figure out the value of the base 2 log for any number? Now let's see what numbers that 
we already know. We know one, two, three. We know four, but we also know five, seven. And I think that it'd be fair to also add 11 and 13 to that list. You would need the log base two of all prime numbers. Hey, I had to put the fire alarm on test today for a guy to repair it, so we're gonna take advantage that it is offline right now and have a fire drill. Okay, fire drill done. Um, so to come back to this, in order for us to find the log base two of any number, we need to find the log base two of all prime numbers. Because really what we're doing when we're doing our factorization tree is we are breaking it down into its prime factors. And therefore we would need to be able to find the log base two of all prime numbers in order for us to find any number. Uh, that's what log tables are for. Let someone else do the work. You can Google log tables if you want to take a look at what they look like. They're actually pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of always, sometimes, or never true with some of the following expressions. Actually, these are equations. What am I talking about? These are equations. Okay, log base 4 of 5 minus log base 4 of x equals log base 4 of 5 minus x. Always true. This is just our quotient rule in reverse. Okay, log base 3 minus log x minus log x. So you can see how this one works. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit. Log x plus log x, which is really 2 log x. X. It kind of, it works in reverse. We're gonna call this one always. Okay. Log x minus log five equals log x divided by log five. Um, in order for this actually to be true, this is what you'd end up with. Log of x over 5 is actually what you should end up with. Okay. 5 log x equals log to the log x to the fifth power. Always true. That's one of our rules, again, just in reverse. Okay, 2 log x plus log 5 equals log x squared plus 5. This one is never true. What you should actually end up with is log of 5x squared. The x squared comes from the 2 log x, the log 5, the 5 comes from this log 5. All right. 1 half log x equals log square root of x. Always true. Whoop. <laughs> that was a funky looking y there. Always true. Just as a reminder, whenever you see square root of x, that is the same thing as x to the power of 1 over 2. Just as a reminder for um, exponent rules. Again, makes things a lot easier to deal with because it turns square root problems into multiplication problems. And not only that, dividing things in half. That's awesome. All right, finally, log x minus 5 equals log x divided by log 5. Remember how I said that if it's not multiplication or division on the inside of the log, you're not really able to do much? This one is never true. That's the last one, actually. Awesome. All right, so that was task 2.4 in the Mathematics Vision Project uh, Math 3 textbook. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email, and I will answer you as best I can. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below if you uh, really want to, I suppose. Um, as always, please remember to have an awesome day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.